Hi there, I've had my Nissan Leaf for two years now and uh, when I first looked at buying it I had so many questions about EVs, I knew absolutely nothing about them and um, I knew one person that drove one uh, who unfortunately was the person that I kept going to to ask the same questions over and over again to try and get um, make sure I got the right answers. Uh, the internet had the answers but it took hours and hours, days and days of researching um, and what I find, those questions that I was asking two years ago are pretty much the same questions that I find people asking me now. People that are looking to buy an EV or um, had never even considered them before and saw me driving one and they've come up to me in car parks and it's always the same questions that people ask me. So with that in mind, I thought what I'd do is put a video together with all those questions that regularly get asked. Now, some of them might sound really straightforward and simple, but people just don't know the answers. And a lot of the time, it's just a bit of reassurance that actually these vehicles can be used exactly the same as an ICE vehicle. The kind of the overarching question or the thing that you need the answer to most is the range that you get out of your chosen EV. Is that enough for you to go about your daily business, your daily commute, your daily drive, without having to worry. Now, it might be that during the course of your daily drive, there's a charger somewhere, so you can sort of research that and see how that works out. But ultimately, if the sort of 95% of the time you can get by, that 5% of the time when you go on a family trip, uh, three, 400 mile drive, you can work that out. There's other ways um, of getting around that. So for 95% of the time, does the range in your chosen EV match what you want to do? So that's the kind of the overarching question, if you like. But then there's all those other questions that about charging it, and about um, how the weather affects it, about uh, can you charge it in the rain? There's all sorts of these questions that probably sound quite silly to some people, but ultimately they're the same questions that people ask over and over again. So uh, as I say, I'm gonna put this video together. I'm just gonna highlight uh, a handful of those really popular questions um, and using my experience from the last two years and the sort of my driving and my research that I've done hopefully I can answer some of those questions all in one place as a kind of a, a one-stop will an EV work for you kind of video so um so yeah without further ado here's the first question this is kind of like the, the holy grail of um, EV driving how far can you make your EV go before you need to charge it up again? So the ranges vary massively, as I'm sure you, you know. Um, I, I want to kind of discount uh, the hybrid type vehicles because um, although they do have a, a, an electric motor in them, they also have a petrol engine. So some of those can maybe do 20 to 30 miles tops on their electric motor before the petrol kicks in or the diesel kicks in. So discounting those, um, you're looking probably at the moment of your, kind of your mass produced cars, the lower range is probably the 24 kilowatt Nissan Leaf, which is what I drive. Uh, that can go probably at most, if I'm really, really careful on a good day, I can personally, I can do about 100 miles. Um, I normally reckon on about um, 80 miles, and that gets me comfortably wherever I want to go. Um, if I drive it at high speed on a dual carriageway in the wind in the middle of winter that might drop to maybe 60 miles but that's um, for me that's quite unusual um, so yeah so that I'd say is a lower end uh, the new leaf is a 30 kilowatt hour battery um, that can do uh, I've heard reports comfortably 130 miles um, I've heard people are doing 150 plus miles in that so that, there you're kind of your base level, your Renault Zoe is pushing on um, the 200 mile mark, that's the new version. Um, uh, and then you go through up to your Teslas, which obviously they do lead the way. You pay a premium for them, but um, I think the top end there, Roadster, will do up around 400 miles. More realistically, Model S will do um, in excess of 300 miles comfortably.
when you buy an EV now, quite often you have a choice of batteries and the size of those batteries are measured in kilowatt hours, KWH. But what actually is a kilowatt hour? Well, it is, it's measured as uh, how much electricity a 1000 watt appliance would use in one hour. So uh, to bring that into more real terms, uh, if you've used a 100 watt light bulb, it would take 10 hours to use one kilowatt of electricity. So when you look at that as a battery in an EV, what we're talking about is the size of its fuel tank, its energy tank. So obviously the, the bigger that energy tank, the further it can go. So what, what does it actually cost then? Well, this obviously depends on your local tariff, what you've signed up to. So for me, for example, it's between uh, 12 and 13p per kilowatt hour. Um, I think the national average is just over 14p per kilowatt hour. So to bring that back into the real world then, if we're looking at charging up a uh, electric car, how much is it going to cost? Well, working on that national average of 14p per kilowatt hour, I've done some figures and I'm going to find somewhere to stop because I've written them down and I shall go through them with you. Right, this seems like a reasonable place to stop. So, uh, working on those figures of um, your home electricity costing the average of 14 pence per kilowatt hour, um, looking at the current Nissan Leaf, which is uh, has a battery of 30 kilowatt hours. So to charge that from flat to full, 30 kilowatt hours would cost you £4.20. Now, Based on um, its its current range, which we can argue about it, but between 130 and 150 miles, I think is realistic from what I understand. Um, we'll use that lower number of, it's got a range of 130 miles. Based on that, that would cost you three pence per mile. So if you add that up to 50,000 miles, which is a reasonable amount of time, I would think for somebody to own a car for, uh, the overall cost of electricity that you would put in it would be £1,500. Now just to compare that uh, to a kind of a, a, a an ICE car, some very rough figures but just to give you an idea, I've worked out that if, um, if it cost you £70 to put fuel in your car and you did 600 miles for that £70, that would be 17.5 pence per mile. Now over 50,000 miles, <clears throat> that would cost you £5,833, give or take. So you can see a massive saving. Um, we're looking at sort of over £4,300 in 50,000 miles. So that kind of, that question that I get asked about, you know, what, what the size of the battery is, how far can they go, what does it cost? Um, that for me is the major selling point and um, I personally don't think the uh, garages that sell these cars um, push that enough because regardless of whether you're into saving the environment or not that is a massive saving um, over a hundred thousand miles that's the cost of a decent second-hand car this is one of those questions that people always ask but always follow up with oh, I I know it's a really silly question well it's not because if you haven't seen an EV being charged, you, you just have no idea. But it's really simple. You just plug it in. Now, there's lots of different places you can charge it, lots of different charge points and connectors, but ultimately, it's one plug that plugs in to the car, and it's as simple as that. Now, depending which car you've got, you might have, um, for example, in the Leaf, there's two different charge points. Uh, most cars have just got one now, and they kind of, they draw on whatever power is being put into them. Um, but it's pretty obvious where, where your connector goes. It just plugs straight in um, and the car will start charging for you. 